Hi! In this video, I will demonstrate how you can use an MFRC522 RFID module with ESP32 using MicroPython. RFID is an acronym which stands for Radio Frequency Identification. This module is the most popular RFID module for most hobbyists and makers. This is capable to serve as RFID reader as well as RFID writer. MFRC522 RFID module should be powered with 3.3 volts on pin number 1, as you can see here, and attach the common ground on pin number 3. It can be interfaced in three ways as follows. Number 1, through serial UART communication on pin number 5 and pin number 8, as TX and RX pin respectively. Number 2, through serial I2C communication on pin number 5 and pin number 8, as SCL and SDA pin respectively. Number 3, through serial SPI communication on pin number 5 to pin number 8, as MISO, MOSI, s -clock, and chip select pin respectively. For this video, we will use SPI communication protocol because it provides the fastest possible communication. Pin number 2 or reset pin can be used to reset the MFRC RFID module. Pin number 4 or IRQ pin is the interrupt pin if you want to handle the RFID scans using interrupts. In order to follow this lesson, you will also need an ESP32 development board with a MicroPython firmware inside, a 16x2 LCD module with I2C interface, a breadboard, some RFID plastic cards, or some RFID key fobs. Some LEDs which will be used as indicator. And lastly, some jumper wires. Let me set this aside and let's assemble the circuit. Begin by attaching the ESP32 board to the breadboard. Then attach the RFID module to the breadboard. Connect the 3.3 volts to the BCC of RFID module. Connect the ESP32 ground to the MFRC522 ground pin number 3. Connect the RC522 reset pin to GPIO4. Connect the chip select pin to GPIO number 5. Connect the s clock pin to GPIO 18. Connect the MISO pin to GPIO 19. Connect the MOSI pin to GPIO 23. Now let's use also the green LED as indicator. Let's connect it to GPIO 13. Also connect the red LED to GPIO 14. Now for the LCD with I2C interface, I will use these jumper wires. I will connect the red to the BCC and brown for the ground, yellow for the SDA pin, and orange for the SCL pin. Now to power this LCD, we need 5 volts. So we will connect it here in the BIN pin for the VCC and ground pin. Now for the SDA pin, which is the yellow pin, I will attach it to GPIO 21, while the remaining one, which is the SCL pin, to GPIO 22. Now it's almost complete. I just need a ground pin for these two LEDs. 
So I will connect the ground it. What I will do is with its pin on the same line of breadboard. Now I will connect its cathode to the ground. Okay. Now our circuit is complete. Now let me attach the ESP32 to my computer with a micro USB by attaching the micro USB to the ESP32. Now let's move to the software. For the software part, I prepared here three example source code for this demonstration. But before that, we need a driver library to handle the communication between the MFRC522 and the ESP32. Thankfully, I found an MFRC522 driver library from GitHub, which is from CephN. Just copy this one, the MFRC522.py, and paste it to your MicroPython. Let me press the stop button to detect the ESP32. I already copy the MFRC522.py in Tony. Upload this to your MicroPython device root directory. Just click the file menu, select save as, select the MicroPython device, and save it as MFRC522.py. And click OK. Since we are going to use the 16x2 LCD with I2C interface, you will also need to upload these two files, the LCD underscore API dot PY and the I2C underscore LCD dot PY to your MicroPython root directory, which will be provided in the blog post for this video. Links could be found in the video description. So, same for this LCD API and the I2C LCD, which as you can see here in the MicroPython device, you can see four files which are boot, I2C underscore LCD, LCD API, and the MFRC522.py. Now for example number one, let me click the run button to execute it. It says place the card so i have here a key pubs which will be put here in the REPL, you can observe that it returns the uid specific for this rfid key pubs let's try again with another key pubs and as you can see it returns a different uid for is key fobs. and once more let's use an RFID card as you can see it returns a different UID it simply it begins by importing the MFRC 522 from the MFRC driver library it also imports the pin class from the machine module and the SPI class from the machine module which is the interface we are going to use. Then we instantiate an SPI object named SPI, which will use the SPI port number 2 with a baud rate of 2,500,000. By the way, I am using the hardware SPI pins for the ESP32 with S clock pin on GPIO 18, MOSI pin on GPIO 23 and MISO pin on GPIO 19 while the last two pins can use a different GPIO now if you intend to use a different GPIO pins you need to use a soft SPI then initialize the SPI communication then create an MFRC522 object named RDR or reader using the SPI communication protocol with Reset pin on GPIO 4 and chip select pin on GPIO 5. Now here it says place card, which you can observe here in the REPL. Now in our main loop, 
it uses a polling method which will always read the RFID module. This one will return the status and the tag type. If the status is OK, check again, read again the RFID, and if it is still OK, parse the card ID from the row ID variable. And lastly, print the card ID, which you can observe here in the repo. Now with example number two, let me press the stop button to terminate example number one and click the run button to execute example number two. With this example, it says scan RFID. When I scan an RFID, which is recognized, it will turn on the green LED. While when I scan an unrecognized RFID, it will turn on the red LED. If the RFID that is scanned is equal to this RFID, it will grant an access indicated with the green LED. And if not, such as this one, the UID is this one, it's not equivalent to this, it will deny the access. And turning on the red LED. For the last time, let's grant an access. Now with example number three, let me terminate the example number two by clicking the stop button first, then click the run button to execute example number three. This example can be used as attendance system. I created here a variable which can be used as database. Let's say if I scan this number one, it says, welcome teacher one. How about this one? This one should be welcome teacher number two. For this one, it says student two. How about this one? Student number three. And this one, student one. How about if the RFID being scanned is not in the database, such as this one, student number four? Access is denied because this one cannot be found in our database. So basically, I have here a Python list which works similar to an array which holds the UID of the RFID tags. I also created another list variable which holds the names corresponding to the UID. In the main loop, so we are polling the card ID. If there is someone who is scan his ID will be parsed using this line of code, we will get the username by calling this function. So here in the get username function we need a UID as an input. Then it will get the index of the input UID and use it for determining the name. If the UID cannot be found from the variable or the list, it will return a negative one. So here, the returned username is not equal to zero, meaning that the username is found in the this variable, then the green LED will be turned on indicating that the user is found in our database. While the red LED is off and it will print welcome the username that is returned by calling this function. Else if zero which is returned by this then the red LED will be turned on and the access denied will be printed in our LCD. So that's pretty much of it. I hope you can learn something from this. As always, the source code that is in here including other information can be found in the companion blog post for this video at techtotinker.blogspot.com. Links in the video description. If you have any question, please write your message in the comment box provided. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and share so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell 
because I will be uploading more videos like this in the future. Thank you and see you next time. God bless.